All right, so on our first day of uh, our class, we're going to define a few concepts and then start using WordPress pretty quickly. So WordPress, this is a CMS. Uh, anyone know what CMS might stand for? Content management system. Content management system, yes. Content management system. Basically, software to make a website. Well, the content that we're going to manage is your text, your pictures, your products, your prices, your inventory. All of that is content on a website. And a CMS, like WordPress, helps you make a website. Uh, does anyone know other examples of CMSs out there? Drupal. Drupal, sure. Wikipedia. The wiki system, yes. Anything else? Cantico. Which one? Cantico. Cantico, huh? I'm not sure if I've heard about that one. Cantico. With a K E N. Cantico. Some, something like that? K E N. Yeah, T I C O. Okay, Cantico. Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver. So we've got a variety of ways to make a website. Um, people might also use Wix, Squarespace stuff like that. So there's lots of ways, Joomla, there's lots of ways to make a website. Um, they're all right and they're all wrong. It just <laughs> depends on what you're trying to do. Something like classic Dreamweaver is much more hands-on. You write your code, you make your layouts, a little bit closer to the metal as it were. Something like Squarespace, WordPress and such uh, remove you from the, from the innards of it all because all behind the scenes basically a website is code, oftentimes HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and other code, uh, like PHP and MySQL. A website is code. And in the old days, when, uh, when the web uh, was first uh, being popularized in the early 90s, mid-90s, people were making websites writing this code. Uh, you can still make a website in code, some people like that, but for most of us that have a business, we want to get online quickly, we want to make uh, an online presence to sell products or put our, out our contact information quickly, we don't have time to learn the code and troubleshoot the code, we want to get up online quickly. So something, a CMS like WordPress or Drupal, Squarespace and such can really help. CMSs range from free to not free. And that's a big range in that some are very expensive, some less expensive, and so forth. Our CMS will be WordPress, which is mostly free. And we'll talk about what the details are, what's the free part, what's not the free part, and such. We'll cover all of the details, uh, setting it up, using it, etc. But the idea is we'll be using WordPress. Two flavors. WordPress.com, WordPress.org. So we have these two flavors of WordPress. I'm going to say WordPress.com is training wheels. And WordPress.org is a bit more power user. Uh, you can do, let's just say to put a percentage, you can do 90% complete. You can do 90% of what most people will want to do in WordPress.com. And then WordPress.org is 100% complete. .com is easier to set up and use. WordPress is not as easy to set up, but easy to use. Once it's set up, it is easy to use. It's as easy to use as WordPress.com. It's just that the setup over at WordPress.com is very easy, and WordPress.org is not as easy. That's why I'm recording my lectures. I'm going to give you handouts that walk you step by step in a variety of actions. 
but this 10% might be very, very valuable. It might be the part about e-commerce. I want to sell products. I want to sell goods and services. Um, I want to, you know, set up an inventory system and such. That's what's missing from the 90% at the dot com. So e-commerce features not built in and then the dot org e-commerce features activatable activatable um, there's lots of nuances between the two I'm sorry I can't see the right of that yes it's hard to show it all at once so I'll try my best to show everything as I can mm -hmm. So, the two flavors that we have here, uh, we'll, we'll look at both of them for a little bit, but then it's going to be WordPress.org that we focus on. Um, this one, um, another way to say third-party hosted, this is self-hosted. You're going to be building your website on someone else's server on someone else's uh, site on someone else's computer basically if you go this route uh, if you go through the org route it's self-hosted it's on your computer sort of it's on your server if these things don't make sense they will make sense as we go on I'm just contrasting these different concepts you will often have something such as my site.wordpress.com versus my site.com. You'll get their branding on your website over here, and you'll get your website as you want over here. So there's pros and cons. One is not right or wrong based on what you want to do, except that we're going to focus on .org because it has all of the features. But it also has more complication. And at some point, dollar value there. Yes, exactly. The price. Uh, yeah, let's do that one first here. Uh, this is most free. And then uh, requires some investment. This is the most free version that you can get. And the dot R requires some investment. Uh, this is uh, basically infrastructure, which we'll, we'll cover that in infrastructure. Uh, regarding .com, tech support available. And .org, mostly you're on your own. That's why this class is here, to help you get on your own. Um, I'm painting things very starkly at the moment, but there is overlap. Things do bleed over between the two camps, just to show you the two sides of the coin, because uh, people always ask. I've taught this class for several years. Uh, like I said, I've been teaching for over 10 years. I've taught this class for uh, over five years. I was teaching Dreamweaver before that. I've done this for clients. I've been making websites. You know, he says, I'm making, I've been making websites for 15 years. Well, that was when I was counting 2001. So it's been way past 15 years now. I just keep still thinking 15 years, but no, that's more like 17, 18 years now, almost 20 years. And websites have been around almost 30 years. Now, the Internet has been around since the 60s, but websites, web design, those concepts have been around since about 1989. It's just about 30 years of web design. And the goal has always been for people to make their own websites as easily as possible and as powerfully. So a CMS, like WordPress, is there to help in that endeavor. Go ahead and go to your web browser, uh, and let's go to WordPress.com. We've got all the popular web browsers down here, so pick whichever you like. Let's go look at WordPress.com for a moment. So any web browser you want, go to WordPress.com.
WordPress powers 30% of the internet. Join the global community. So 30% of websites of the world use WordPress. And as I said, I've taught this class for a while, and I used to say 20% of websites are in WordPress. 25% of websites are in WordPress. Now that I looked at it today, 30% of websites. So many, many, many websites out there, millions of websites, hundreds of millions um, of websites are in are, are created in uh, WordPress, the WordPress software. Uh, here, then, like I said, this is the uh, this is the um, the training wheels version, and uh, I, I said here I, I divided them about the free version and the paid version. Right here, it is saying four dollars a month, but there is a version that is completely free. But again, it's it's the training wheels. This one here for four dollars a month, you get that custom domain, tons of features, twenty four seven expert support. So. Um, that's uh, forty-eight dollars. That's less than fifty dollars a year if you want to go with the WordPress.com version of WordPress. Again, we're, I'm still going to focus on the .org version. Um, as we go through the course, we will see why. But you can look at this on your own at some point, and they really sell you on it that it can be very easy. You can get up and start it very quickly. You get all these great designs and so forth. And um, if you're curious, you can see the plans. I'll click pricing at the top there. So there is the version that's for free $4, as little as $4 a month, $8 billed yearly, $25 a month. So it's a big jump from 18 to 25. Uh, and as you compare the plans, if you look at the full comparison, if you're curious, you know, what else does it come with on the more expensive versions? Notice the free one. You get a WordPress.com subdomain, meaning you get mywebsite.wordpress.com. You get victorsrestaurant.wordpress.com. If I wanted victorsrestaurant.com, I'd have to go up to the higher levels over here. Custom domain name. Uh, okay, community support. That's a nice way of saying you're on your own. Go look it up over here. Ask someone. Ask an unpaid volunteer. <laughs> over here, email and live chat support. When you pay, you can get help from the official WordPress company that way. Uh, themes are the design of your website, and here it says you get dozens of them for free. Well, at the higher levels, you get even more designs because all of the people that go with the free version, you know, let's say that there's a hundred themes to choose from. Well, your website might look similar to someone else's. And you might not care. Uh, most of us probably care a little bit that my website looks like someone else's. I want it to be my website, my unique thing. So you have to go up to the higher levels for that. You get basic customization on these levels. Uh, I want to change my logo. I want to change the text. So basic things. Advanced things are more expensive. How much space do you have to upload stuff? Well, I want I need to upload pictures and video, and I need to uh, have multimedia and all that cool stuff. Three gigabytes for free. With higher levels, you get more space. You're also going to have uh, ads on your site for free. If you go up to the $4 version, no ads. Higher levels, you can make money off of your site. You can monetize. And then the highest level, you get all this other great stuff. Uh, install custom plugins and themes, Google Analytics. You don't get Google Analytics to track your traffic on these lower levels. Now, you can start on a WordPress.com site and transfer it to .org. So if, if you already created a site there, you will be able to transfer it. We'll touch on that later. But if you're going to create your site brand new, I would, rec I would not recommend at WordPress.com. Prices are affordable at $4 a month, but you have the limitations, such as the e-commerce features. Well, that's the big idea of this class. Once we get to the advanced stuff, I want to sell products, and that's not at the $4 level. So you can look at that on your own. Has anyone ever created a WordPress.com site before? A few people? OK, good. Let's go compare then with WordPress.org. So in another window, or 
tab. That's the reason I'm sitting here, because it's hard. Yes. Let's go to WordPress dot four. Yes. Are you going to touch on at all the difference between store space and bandwidth? Uh, we will once it makes more sense for us when we've got our WordPress set up. WordPress.org. Okay, so WordPress, the WordPress software, the CMS, is owned by a parent company uh, called Automatic. The Automatic company, I must say, somewhere. Automatic, somewhere. The word, the WordPress company is automatic uh, named after the founder Matt Mullenweg automatic get it so Mullenweg founded the WordPress software and then they made it into a company and now they're the biggest uh, web design company um, software 30% as it said well they gave the software away for free and they make money on it a couple of ways uh, one way, for example, is snazzy t-shirts <laughs> about WordPress. The other way is their whole WordPress.com. Because at WordPress.org is where it says, download it. Here it is, take it, download it, install it, use it, make a website for free. Well, they make their money off of the t-shirts and merchandise and WordPress.com. So WordPress.org is the is the version where we're going to focus on where it's got all the features, um, all the themes, all the designs, all the plugins, all the complication, all the do it yourself aspect of it, but all the power and control. Um, at the WordPress.org, uh, we can go look at themes, which is the design or the look of your site, plugins, and uh, get support. We can go over here to the forums. We can read the documentation. We could learn on our own what does this screen do? What does that button do? And you can keep up to date with the software, with the latest software releases. So I would uh, recommend that you. The book that I mentioned of Visual Quick Start Guide is good, but like I said, it goes out of date because books go out of date regarding technology. So I would recommend that you get familiar with WordPress.org because that's better than the book because it's the latest information up to date about the software. And it's found over at the support screen documentation. Documentation tutorials best practices. So we'll say here also um, buy it and get started. WordPress.com. Download it, set it up, get started. Buy it, or we can say sign up because uh, again, uh, focused on the uh, focused on. <coughs> focused on the uh, free version of WordPress.com, you just sign up, you get started. More features, you buy it, and you get started. Over at the .org, it's got more setup, and that's what we'll talk about. I'll walk you through setting it up. I'm going to be recording all of this in case you need to refresh your memory if you want to do it on your own. I'll have handouts that also walk you step by step to set it up. Yes. If, if you are looking at someone else's WordPress site, is there a very quick and easy way to see which version they have? Like whether it's keyboard or. Uh, well, one way is if you see that it's got, for example, mywebsite.wordpress.com in the address. If it's not like that, it's a little harder to tell if it's the free or paid version. Uh, on any of these websites, we can look at the code of the website, but there often isn't a way to discern the two versions. Most of the time, people that are serious are not using the free version, the .com. Most of the time, it's the .org that's used. 
So there might be a way uh, to be able to tell which is the version used, um, but uh, via the code, I haven't quite seen it. Well, they both work the same. If you're on WordPress.com or .org, once you log in to change the site, they're the same. So the various screens about adding a product or adding text or changing colors, those screens will look the same. You'll be missing a few things on .com compared to .org. Once we log in, once we set up .org, we will see, okay, here's the 20 options I have in the menu. And then if I log into that client and they've only got six options, most likely they've got the .com version, which again is the training wheels. It doesn't give you every feature. So at the .org, we get the documentation, and I don't, I don't have a mirror repair for that. You just get the documentation. Again, we're not really going to use uh, the .com. Um, we use the .org features. Questions so far? Yes. Um, are you going to go over how, you know, when you use it on MAMP or whatever, or local mm -hmm. post, um, how to get that up on your server? Yes, one of the items that I had there on the syllabus said uh, back up the site and migration. So yes, we will cover uh, setting up a local development environment and then migrating it, transferring it over to a real server. Requirements for WordPress.org, the software a domain name, a server. So the software. Get it free at wordpress.org. A domain name and the server pay for it a yearly subscription and um, there are a variety of places where you can buy the, these things at. And as we go through the class, I'll be mentioning different ones, but just a few off the top of my head. You might have heard of these GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster. That's it for the moment. There's plenty more. Um, just I'll mention a few here. But basically, you buy a domain name, you buy a server. Well, what these things are, the domain, the domain name is your URL, your web address. So if I want victorscafe.com, I've got a, a, a business, I'm a cafe, uh, I need a website. OK, well, I need a domain name, the web address. So you buy a domain name at one of these providers. <clears throat> GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, etc., etc., etc. People always tell me, what about this one? What about that one? And uh, I, don't know the, I don't know them all, but if you've had experience with one I don't mention, and you think it's good, then it is good. I'm just mentioning these three ones that are kind of big, kind of famous. But at one of these providers, you buy on a yearly basis, you can buy for two years at a time, five years, ten years at a time. You buy, you sort of rent uh, your name on the internet, victorscafe.com. Well, then you need the server. The hard drive where you upload your content. So your pictures of your products or the text descriptions, or the About Us page information, that's the server, basically. So in order to use the, dot, the, the dot .org, you need the free software at WordPress. And this is the part that I was saying, OK, the software is free, but this is not free. And yes, there are versions out there of these providers that are free. I would not bother with them. You get what you pay for. And you don't get good customer tech support. Uh, you, don't, you usually, if you go to one of these free providers, you get very limited resources, server space, bandwidth, all that stuff. 
Uh, there was a very famous host called uh, 000 Web Host, something like that. It was completely free web hosting. They got hacked. All other websites got hacked that were on their free server. And um, again, I, I don't trust these that you get something for free. Uh, they might put ads on your site. Okay, I have a free website. Great. Don't skimp on buying this stuff. We will cover in more detail the, the deeper prices and advice about it a little later. I don't want to get bogged in, uh, down on that just yet, but expect to pay something in a, in a range between $50 to $250 per year uh, to set up both the domain name and the server. Uh, the, the, the more trimmed down features around that price, more higher end features at that price. Again, we'll get to the details about that a little later, but just be aware that there is a cost of doing business when you've got your own website. You can go over to you know Wix or Squarespace and such and they may give you better deals, but again, you might not get all of the features that you might be looking for, but if, if that Joomla site does what you need, great keep using it, it does what you need it. This class, of course, then focuses on WordPress. So we'll cover um, examples of pricing and setting it up and all of that a little later. But these are going to be the requirements. Since these things are not free, in this class, in our class, we'll set up a local development environment. environment. That basically means we're going to set up WordPress on your computer. It will be a non public server. Your website won't exist on the real internet. People won't be able to type your address and go to your site. Uh, you'll only be able to access your website on your computer, sitting in class here or at home if you do this at home. Uh, this is going to be a local development environment. We can install WordPress on these computers, the full version of WordPress. No one will be able to see it. I, I don't want anyone to see it. It's not complete yet. It's still a work in progress. I don't want anyone to try to buy a product if I don't have the site ready. So then we'll migrate to a public server for all to visit. Once we learn the basis of WordPress, if you've never used it before, once you've learned intermediate concepts of plugins, themes, widgets, and such, once we learn the advanced concepts of shopping carts and e-commerce, then we'll have the ability and the knowledge to start to put our website out there in the real world for people to start to actually visit. But that's when it's going to require the paid aspect. I'm going to show you how to do it, but I'm not going to ask you to actually buy anything throughout the whole class. Uh, after you learn this and get comfortable with it, and maybe rewatch the videos uh, and check the handouts, then you try this on your own, on your own real content and, and go public. We can set up a Windows WAMP or a Mac MAMP version of this local development environment. Uh, this can be set up on Windows or Mac. Like I said, we've got Windows computers here, so we'll be using WAMP. If you want to do any of this at home, you will be able to. You'll give you the handouts and all of that. You can try to do it at home, Windows or Mac. These computers already have the software set up, relatively set up, and ready to start use, usage. Uh, we have to uh, set up a little, a little bit of it. But when you go home, there'll be more steps to do. And again, I've got handouts that will help you through that. So uh, we're going to take our first break in a moment. I'm going to give you a few handouts that I would recommend for you to print uh, when I turn on the printer in a moment, which will have our step-by-step -step instructions. You don't have to follow any of the instructions yet. 
I'm going to give you these handouts. You don't have to print them. You can just look at them on your screen. You've got nice big screens. You could have one half looking at the handout and another half doing the work. But let me put the let me put those handouts in the network folder and let me remind you again where the network folder is. So as I said, I'm going to have uh, various handouts for you as the course goes on. The network folder is, if you remember here, double click on computer on the top left corner of your desktop. Double click computer, then you will see a section of network location. Inside of network location, you should see classroom data drive Z, Z as in zebra. Double click that one. Then our class, Campos WordPress, is right there. You want to open that and drag out these two copies, these two files I just put in there. Uh, Campos eCommerce 1, set up Word, uh, WAMP server, and Campos eCommerce 2, set up WordPress. Uh, drag both of these to your desktop to get a copy of them. Uh, I'll turn on the printer in just a moment. These will come out if you'd like to print, not necessary to print. You could look at them as you do the work, just you know, look at it here and then do your work. But let's take our first break. It's 7.05. We'll take a 10-minute break. Uh, I'll turn the printer on. If you'd like to print that, you can do so. <laughs> 